Hello, it's Claire Leroy here and welcome back to my channel where I share videos for designers, decorators and home renovators who are looking to create beautiful homes and businesses that they love to work in. And this week I'm back with another quick tips video for SketchUp. So as many of you will know, I run a online course for beginners, SketchUp for interior design and beginners course, a self-paced online course that we have had thousands of students come through. And the quick tips videos are videos that I create for students in the course just on upskilling and going deeper into some of the techniques and things that I don't have time to cover fully inside the course. And so one of the videos that I made for um, these quick tips videos is this video that I'm going to share with you today. And that is a video with some tips about how to design bathrooms in SketchUp. So we look at how to change finishes in SketchUp, so how to adjust the colours and the textures of the finishes of your um, of your fixtures and things like that in your bathroom. And we also look at how to smooth out edges because sometimes you have things like curved basins and things like that and students were finding that they had a lot of sort of lines and stuff in their geometry. So in the video I share how to smooth out those lines and just make it look a lot nicer for when you create fly throughs and other things for your clients or for people that you're going to show your model to. So that is what we are looking at today. If you are new around here, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I have videos about running a design business, about SketchUp, about productivity, a whole bunch of different things. So please do subscribe if you're new and also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when my new videos come out. In the meantime, let's jump into this week's video where I am sharing some tips about how to design bathrooms in SketchUp. <music> Hello, Claire here and I'm back with a, another quick tips video. Now today what I'm going to do is a few little tips and tricks about the bathroom area and actually these tips will help you in a lot of different places in your modeling but let's just use the bathroom as an example and in particular I'm going to cover two things in this video. The first thing that we're going to look at is how to change the color of your fixtures and fittings in your bathroom. So lots of times you're able to find the right shape of fixture or fitting in the 3D warehouse, but you might not be able to find the right shape with the right color. And so, you know, with this um, shower head, for example, I often use a shower head in real life that has this exact shape, but I cannot find all the different, um, fi um, all the different colors that I use when I'm doing bathrooms. It might be, you know, gun metal or aged brass or, um, you know, matte chrome or whatever the things might be. So I'm going to show you how to customize your own fixtures so that you can just find the right shape that you're looking for and then you can customize them with the color that you want. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing that I want to do is to show you how to just smooth off the edges of rounded joinery like this where you can see lots of the um, oh, joinery, rounded um, geometry where you can see lots of the edges still appearing in the model. So that's an example there, but also we've got the same problem here and if you have you know round sofas or chairs sometimes you have this when you're bringing in all different things from the 3d warehouse so i'm going to show you how you can soften the edges and smooth that out a little bit um, with um yeah by just using a tool i'll show you how to do it so that's the second thing that i'm going to show you okay so let's start with the first thing which is the changing of the colors of the fixtures now the first thing that you want to go, that you're going to need to do is to find the colors so an image of the color that you are looking to use on google or in one of the seamless textures libraries that's available for sketchup or something like that so um, i happen to have an aged brass here it is not seamless um, and you'll get a much better finish if you do use a seamless texture but you'll get the idea just by me using this one as well and we've got a uh, i think that's like a gun metal or something as well um, as i said seamless is best but because these are small um, objects it's not quite as obvious but uh, and it'll still work the same so I'm going to show you how to do that so the first thing you need to do is find those and then you need to bring them into your custom library so that's step one and then step two is obviously to find your fixtures and place them in your bathroom or you just um, download them into the space you want them I've just mocked up this quick bathroom to show you these tips and tricks today so um, so that's fine so then what we want to do is this is actually all group. So we're just going to click into the group till we get to the group with this um, tap. 
And what you want to do is you can do this a number of ways. Like this, this has selected all the geometry there. And I think if I select this um, color now and paint that, that's going to paint the entire item, which is good. Or sometimes you'll find that you need to do it in um, phases. So you might need to, um, well, let's use one of the other ones to see if it works in a different way. So with this one, yep. So you have to like basically break it down into little sections and you'll find that you have to just um, work through the little sections and be clicking and double clicking to just select little parts of it um, until you've colored the whole thing. So there we go. So you'll just go around until it's all colored. Now, this is not what I suggest you do. This is, so you can select, let me sorry, try this again. If we click in and not quite go quite as far, you can color more at a time. This one might make you have to do that. This is not such a big problem because it's only a small thing, but let me now move over to, this is getting to be a problem, but let me, I'll tell you what we'll do again. So what I don't want you to do is what I'm actually <laughs> demonstrating to you because what you want to try and do is to pick up as much of, there we go, pick up as much of the joinery as you, as the geometry as you can at a time and colour that all at once so you don't have to do what I was just doing because with some of them, like this one, it's actually quite fiddly to get it all painted in the right colour. So... Sometimes you've got to play around with it a little bit. Um, that one will do. So that's that one. And then with this um, thing, you can see there's a lot of geometry. So what I was sort of trying to explain to you that with this one, you don't want to click so far into your groupings that you actually end up right at the very loose geometry where you have to like basically do what I was doing before, which I don't want you to do, and paint every little thing. So we don't want that. So what you have to do is just not quite go that far into the grouping. So... You could go to and select all of that and then we will paint all of that at once. And sometimes you do have to like click a couple of times that you can see that's all painted now. And we'll do the same here. So I've selected all that geometry. Just click a couple of times and it'll colour it all for you. I don't know why it does that, but that's a quick and easy way of doing that. Okay, so another thing just to mention about the um, colouring... So you can see here that it's sort of, I mean, that's fine and it gives the representation that you want of that age brass. But if you would like to make that texture look a little bit better, as in like a little clearer, because it's a little um, blurry, isn't it? What you can see when we right click on round on um, curved surfaces like this is that we can't, haven't got the option to change our texture position. But a way around this is what we can do is draw a rectangle on the ground and what you can do is paint that rectangle with your finish and you can just play around with the texture position on that rectangle not doing that doing this you can make it smaller or bigger or whatever I'm going to try smaller because I think that might help and then what you're going to do is use your eyedropper and click back in and let's see whether making that smaller stops this looking so sort of blurry. Yeah, so that looks much better. See that? So um, again, this will look much better with a seamless texture. I can see a couple of the lines in there, but that looks a lot better, I think. It's not quite as blurry as the other one was. So I would have, um, if I was doing this properly for a client's, for a project, I would have done that process first and then I'd just copy and um, use the eyedropper tool to copy and paste that texture across all of them because these have all got that blurry one so I'm not going to bother doing that but um, that's just a little tip so that you can adjust the way that the texture appears on your curved surfaces because you can't do that directly onto the curved surfaces all right so that is tip number one now let's move on to tip number two and um you is and that's all about how to soften some of this see how we've got all that blue lined geometry so what we're going to do is we're going to click in and select this basin and to do this process you go to your windows and you open up your soften edges window which has appeared here and um, I'm actually not a super expert on how this works but um, 
you'll find that once you click the grouping and that you're in or you've got the group selected that you can activate this and if you play around with these different um, toggles here, like we can see here that that's clicking off that smooth normals. And if I click it back on, um, you can see that that has smoothed the edges. And then you can play around with these different um, sliders. I don't know enough about it to tell you exactly because I've just sort of turned these on and off as I've needed to do this and it's always fixed this up so I probably should do a little bit of a better um, investigation in fact I will and I might do a different video about smoothing edges and all about what that means once I investigate that a little further but for me and the work that I've ever done that looks pretty good don't you think so um, these buttons seem to work pretty well so if we move over to this shower head which you can see has lots of geometry again clicking the grouping and we can um, just play around with the buttons and as you can see we've just got rid of all the um, all the geometry there that was visible and let's see one more time with this little fixtures and fittings which which this little mixer sorry and we've done it again and we've got rid of all those little lines and bits of geometry that we could see so that's a second tip for you as I said, I'm not a super expert on the soften edges. I think you can probably do much more um, intricate work with that, but everything I've ever needed to do was basically what you've just seen me do. So um, I will do some investigation on that for you and we might do another video about that. But in the meantime, that should give you some good tips for how to um, improve the look of your models anyway for the moment. So those were the two tips that I wanted to share with you today. Um, I hope you found those helpful and uh, as always if you have other quick tip um, suggestions that you'd like me to cover please let me know and I would be more than happy to make other videos like this for you. Otherwise I will catch you around in the Facebook group soon. See you later.